Hello! Today, I'm gonna to be showing you all of the iPad accessories and apps that I use to take notes and use my iPad as a note-taking device for school. So let's first start off with my iPad itself. This is the iPad Air 4 from 2020. I did an entire unboxing on that. I'm sure some of you have seen it. I've gained a lot of subscribers from that video. So if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend you go check that out because it has a little bit of like how I set it up and everything. My lighting's changing. Why is it changing? I got the iPad Air 4 silver with 64 gigabytes, no cellular. It was the base model. It is January 30th when I'm filming this and I got this on November 10th. So in the time that I've had my iPad, I'm absolutely in love with it. This is the perfect iPad that I could have gotten. I was looking into iPads before I got this one, obviously, and I was debating about the Pro or like a 2018 one because I really wanted the thin bezels. I didn't want the like thick bars on the side because I think it just looks a little bit outdated at this point. And I was looking at the 2020 pro but i knew it was like way too much money for me to even consider is like a thousand dollars then apple released the air and this is perfect because i don't need like a huge operating system i don't need the pro i don't need the lidar scanner or the better cameras i just needed this to take notes on and i wanted an updated look and this was perfect so definitely if you're thinking about getting an ipad for note taking i highly highly recommend this ipad i love it so much 10.9 inch has served me so well and i think it's the perfect size for me moving on to what's on my iPad specifically like physically on it. My first accessory is going to be this light blue case. This is by Moco. I will have all products I'm talking about linked down below. Moco case is the light blue color is like a folio style. It is not the Apple folio case but it's a trifold. This has like a velvety -er feel but it's not like super soft. It does pick up a little dirt. I don't know if you can tell or not but it's really not that big a deal because most of the time you're not even looking at this side on the back it has a nice frosted back stick it has a nice cutout for the camera here and on the edging here it is thinner and this still allows good magnetic connectivity for my apple pencil too which i'll be showing you in just a minute this plastic is a little bit more flexible like i mentioned in my unboxing video and the other edges are just harder plastic that is what this looks like it is magnetic on this tri-fold i want to say you can fold it so you can have it like that the way I most commonly use my case is to have it set up on my desk and have it propped up like that because that a nice slant for me to write on and everything and it's just a good angle, I think. But if I'm using my keyboard, which I'll be talking about in a minute, I have it up like this and then my keyboard here and I just type. And then it looks sort of like a monitor. The next accessory I'm gonna be talking about is my screen protector. Yes, I did in fact buy a paper-like screen protector. Paper-like as in the brand, not as in similar to paper. I know there's confusion with that in a lot of these kinds of videos. So yes, I did pay $40 for two of them. And honestly, I do think the price is a little high, but I think ultimately it is worth it. I have not tried out other screen protector option so I can't speak on that but from what I've used with this I really like it again you get two in one pack for 40 so it's a little bit of a easier price to think about I guess you could say because you're paying like 20 for one I really do prefer writing on a paper like screen protector versus like hard glass because the way I compare it is taking my pencil and writing on the paper like versus like on my phone with a regular glass protector and I it's so slippery I I don't know if I could take notes as well as I do with the paper like on I definitely recommend getting a matte screen protector does not have to be the brand paper like but i do definitely recommend looking into that sorry if the angles are changing in the lighting it's not working well for me today. Moving right along to, I guess, what's on my iPad internally. Here is my lock screen. It is a collage I made entirely on my own with pictures from Pinterest that I just pulled off and I made this on Canva. And I am gonna be launching my very own website very soon and you will be able to download this wallpaper if you would like to, but stay tuned for that. Swipe up and you get my home screen. This is my only page of apps because I do not have that many apps that I wanna download. I want this iPad to be more for schoolwork rather than content consumption, but I do do a little bit of that on here. So first on the left side, I have my widgets here. I do not live in New York, but I just set that here as the, my weather widget so it doesn't show my actual location. Next to it, I have my battery widget and then I have my Spotify widget and then I have a Pinterest board widget that changes every hour. Screen time, I have a calendar, a sub count. Oh wait, I actually, what is this? Oh, it is a calendar, but I already have a calendar. Okay, so we have screen time, sub count, calendar, that's all there. I have it so it is set up to have it permanently here on the side of my apps instead of like swiping away. Okay, just had to change my lighting because it was not working well for me and slightly my location. Next, we have all my apps here. This is pretty much the same as from when I did my unboxing. The only thing that I think it changed is that I moved my Google Calendar up there and that I took out my Apple Pencil folder and put it all down the down bar. But here are all my default apps. I did download the Weather Channel here 
Apple apps I kind of use occasionally, but I don't use often, but I need them on my iPad. We have all the basic apps here. First one, we have money. Pretty self-explanatory. Next folder I have is location, not too special, same as last time. Same with games. I said I wasn't gonna download too many games, but I literally use my iPad every single day <laughs> to play Dragon Veil. I may be 16, but I still enjoy taking care of fake dragons on my iPad. Magic Piano, Smeal, Dragon Veil, Minecraft, uh, White Tales 4, a crossword puzzle app, and pixel art. The next folder is my school. So I have Google Classroom, a calculator, a graphing calculator, which I can actually delete because I don't take math anymore. Power schools, how I check my grades, Google Classroom, Soundtrap, which is like a music creating app, I guess you could say. Google Slides, Google Meets, Kahoot, and Sketchbook. For lifestyle, it's just a bunch of random apps. I don't think I've actually used any of these on here except for Widget Smith. And I think that's actually it. We have Amazon ALEXA. Which is Smith Lightroom characters, which is how I get like fancy characters. It's how I got the Apple symbol for my Apple folder title. We have an ad blocker that doesn't actually work on YouTube, which is the only reason why I downloaded it. So I should probably delete that. Full screen clock, and that's just this. It's like my Flicklo clock screensaver on my computer, except to get that on a mobile or a tablet version. You do have to pay for it, and I didn't want to pay for a literal clock app. So I just downloaded this free one. We got Notion. I have never used Notion, but I definitely want to get into it. Apple Pages, Evernote, a password safe app. So like you can put all your passwords there and it remembers them and then a stories edit for Instagram. Next we have TV. We have, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Just Watch is actually a like TV guide, I guess you could say. So you go into it, you can search up any movie or TV show and it'll tell you what streaming platforms are on. Pretty self-explanatory here. We got my YouTube folder, which is just like YouTube and YouTube editing slash related apps. On the bottom, we have Google Chrome, GoodNotes, Notability, Procreate, Spotify. And then I honestly don't even use Spotify. So we're gonna move that. I recently started using good notes for my AP music theory class because it does offer staff paper and it's very nice to have that ability rather than print off like thousands of pages worth of staff paper so I can just write on here it's very easy to use currently this is my like staff paper stuff that I'm doing right now and you go over here you have all your notebooks here the way good notes is organized is sort of like your desktop folders on your computers and stuff and I don't really like how it's set up very much but I do like how there's one feature where at the top here you see there's these tabs so when I'm in class for AP I only have my AP theory notes notebook open and my staff paper open so it's really easy to switch between the two which is something that notability does not allow me to do so that is good notes and I use good notes just for my AP class and I prefer using notability otherwise but I will show you that so these are just my notebooks you can customize it to however you want you can kind of have all your paper here music and then you can do your cover select anything you want so that is the app i use for my music class the only reason i use good notes over notability in that sense is because it has staff paper as an option i also have good notes on my computer it is free on your computer and i know it's more like drawing interface but you can type on it it syncs over icloud so it's nice that i can like write down my notes and then look at it later if i'm like doing my homework on my computer it's very nice in that regard next to it i have notability i talked a little bit about this in my how I use notability to take notes video. I'll link that above over there so you guys can check that out if you're interested. Nothing's really changed since that video and I highly recommend you go watch that so I don't have to re-explain everything. Here are all of my notes and the way notability is set up I guess you'd say is more like the notes app in your phone rather than the desktop folders which is GoodNotes 5. Those are the apps I use to take notes on my iPad. I get a lot of questions about that and also we have Procreate which is a drawing app. I'm sure you're familiar with it. I just do random drawings for fun like I've been messing around with doing iPhone wallpapers recently and I just have a bunch of random stuff and I love Procreate. I definitely think it is worth it to buy Procreate and for that matter no taking apps in general because when you think about it Procreate is $10 and what you'd spend on a sketchbook and nice pens and markers and pencils and erasers and all of your art supplies is so much more than $10 when you have Procreate for $10 and you get so many options. Same with the apps. I said this in my notability video, but when you think about it, you're only paying seven or $8 for an app when in reality, if you were to do it by paper, you'd be paying for a notebook, a pen, a pencil, eraser, all this other stuff. And when it's so much cheaper, if you just do it like this and it is a lot more worth it. And that is everything on 
on my iPad, I'm gonna stop screen recording now. Now we can get on to the actual accessories on how I take my notes. So the first accessory I have is the Apple Pencil Generation 2. This is so completely worth it. It is changed my iPad experience, quite honestly. I haven't owned an iPad without a pencil, so I can't even imagine what it's like doing Procreate. I really couldn't have imagined drawing without a stylus or pencil. There are other cheaper stylus out there in the game, but as far as I'm concerned, an Apple one is very worth it. I really like the double tap feature on the flat side where I can go from a marker or like a pen and then I double tap on the flat side and then I get an eraser. It's so nice. It's so easy to work with. And with this sleeve on and this case, it does work magnetically and it does charge. This case does work with this sleeve through and this case and I really like I can just stick it on really quick and just go. The only thing I don't like about it is when I'm traveling with my iPad and my pencil like in a backpack to school, the pencil does fall off because the magnetic connection is not as strong as it would be had there been no sleeve on it or no case, but I don't trust myself to carry my devices around without a case. That's that. I do have a black case by Pro case I showed in my boxing video, but I think I'd only use that when I'm traveling so I can like put my pencil in there to make sure it doesn't leave. But I also like having a case on my pencil just for grippiness because otherwise it does slip out of my hands and it's a pretty small little thing. My first pencil case I had in that video was actually this one and it is a clear case and it has a little cap to it. I'll show you how it differs. This one is a little bit hard to get out because it is so slim. Okay, and there it is. Very small, very slim. Here's my pencil without the case on it and it's still obviously would stick. The magnetic connection is a little bit more. I can definitely tell. This is very sleek and sort of like a matte feel to it. Definitely keep that in mind if you are looking for a sleeve. Now for the original clear one I got, it is not as tight to the pencil than my other one. So if I slide this one in, it's very easy. You can still see the logo on it and it's very easy to grip and it works very well. But there is a cap to it, which is this little plastic thing I just took on and off. I think this would be good if I were traveling with my black pro case and I want to keep my pencil in the case itself and then I wanted to have a case on it so I can like grip it when I draw but I don't like this case very much which is why I ordered the other one because the cap part it doesn't like go on the back like yeah I can do that but it just doesn't look very good and I didn't like doing that every single time like taking off a pen cap when I could just have it on my iPad like this and pull it off right away but ultimately the case is up to you for like what your preference is this case also works with charging through this case and the sleeve so keep that in mind both are fine on that front for my blue one I actually got this in a two pack So I have a light blue one which kind of almost exactly matches my case and the dark blue one Which I just had on here. It is in comparison to the case It's really not that far off, but I like the dark blue one because it provides some contrast So to put it on you just slide it back in and then you're good Obviously making sure that the flat side lines up the next thing is something that a lot of people comment about and it is pencil tips and the wear with the screen protector. Now I definitely have noticed my Apple pencil tip getting lower and duller since using it and I do use it pretty rigorously. I would say most days I take notes for maybe anywhere from an hour to three hours for schoolwork four days a week. Do with that as you will so the pencil tip is wearing down but I haven't had to change it yet and with the screen protector I definitely think it does wear it out faster. That's what a lot of people say too and I definitely think there's some truth to that because I don't have a brand new pencil tip to compare it to but this is what it is like now. I'm not even sure if you can tell. It does wear down a little bit. Keeping that in mind, I bought this little pack of replacement tips and they also have replacement caps with them. I have this little thing. These are the tips here and then the white and the blue little things are the caps. Now I have tried drawing and writing with a little cap on and while it does work, friction is more so it doesn't like glide as smooth as I'm used to. So that's why I don't have a cap on it. It is a good thing to remember to buy. I will link this pack down below. I think this was like, I say like 10, 15 bucks for I think five caps. If you go through the Apple made tips, those I think are 20 for a pack of four. And I thought that was a little bit pricey. So I just got this. Again, this is my original tip. I haven't had to switch it out yet, but definitely get some replacement tips and some covers if you do get a paper-like screen protector because it is wearing it down a little bit, but I do use it quite rigorously. So keep that in mind. The next thing I want to talk about is this dongle I use, which is actually for my computer. That's what I originally bought it for. But since the new, iPad is USB-C charging, thank the Lord. I can plug this in and add anything I want to. I can add a memory card here. What I do like to do is use an external microphone to pick up what my teachers are saying when I'm in notability and recording lectures. So that really helps because the microphone 
microphone on this is not very good obviously so that's what i like to use this for but if you're doing like photo editing you could definitely use it to get some memory cards to your device also usb-c stuff and it's just it's good to have a dongle i will link this one down below i like it a lot next thing is my mouse and keyboard bluetooth setup for a mouse i got two of these for christmas actually because i told my dad and my sister that i wanted it and they both got it for me so that's kind of awkward but this one works really well i'm a fan of it it's a pretty cheap mouse it works it's great for the price i think it was like 10 or 15 dollars the only thing i regret about getting this is not having like a trackpad or like the roller to go to the side as well because i want to like swipe and stuff but you can't do that with this mouse that's the only thing i don't like about it otherwise it works great so if i were to get a new bluetooth mouse i would probably get a trackpad but that is also just my personal preference from having a computer for so long. Along with that, I have this mouse pad here. I think it's by, this is just a pretty cheap mouse pad. It's very grippy on the back. It doesn't leave marks on my desk either, which is nice. And it does its job very well. And it's super thin, easy to travel with. And lastly, for my accessories, I have this Bluetooth keyboard. This is an older version of the Apple keyboard. I'm not sure what year. It says 2009 Apple Incorporated Copyright All Rights Reserved. I'm very certain they have new ones now, but this one was an old one that my dad had and he wasn't using So he let me have it because he doesn't use this and I love the keyboard on this. The clicking sound is so nice it, I just love sitting in class going I love it a lot. There are some good Bluetooth keyboards out there. I know Logitech has some good ones, but I think that is a little bit pricier. I'm not entirely sure though. I know Jellycomb has some good ones, but again, this is the one that I have and I really like it, but also it's Apple brand. So I don't know why I wouldn't like it personally. And it's doing its job perfectly fine. If you don't like doing handwritten notes and you like doing typing notes, look into just getting a computer like at all. Or if you don't want to spend the money on a computer, definitely look into getting a keyboard and mouse set up because I like having my stuff set up like this in class and while the teacher's talking I can just use my, my iPad as like sort of a second monitor to type while they're like talking on the video call it's very easy very convenient and I do like this setup a lot those are all of my accessories and apps that I used for note taking if you'd like to see how I take my notes more specifically definitely check out my notability video that and my unboxing will be linked down below if you have any other iPad videos you'd like me to do please leave me a comment down below if you have any questions again leave me a comment down below I read all of my my comments so if you have a question i'll definitely do my best to help you out i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below and when you subscribe don't forget to turn on that post notification bell so you get notified every single time that i upload on tuesdays and fridays when i can at 3 p.m eastern all my social media are linked down below today's quote is going to be to live is the rarest thing in the world most people exist that is all oscar wilde i just read they both die at the end and there were like little quotes about life in each section and that was one of them and it's a really good quote and i really like it it's also my instagram bio right now anyways if you made it here comment down below ginger ale because i'm looking at a can of ginger ale over there on my bookshelf thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one